Good evening. This is the Planning Board meeting of February 9th, 2010. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, we do have a rather short agenda tonight, but if there is uh, anything that uh, is not on the agenda, I'll open up the meeting now for public comments. Yes, Ms. Quax. Hi, Rosie and Quax, Wadley Falls Road in Newmarket. Um, I, I see you folks have been meeting almost as much as the, the council has, almost every other Tuesday, even more. And um, I, I can see that you're getting busy with some great projects that sound, they might not come to pass, but they sound good for the town, um, especially with the mills. And I know uh, Mr. Chimberg's been in and out quite a bit, and he's got something set up in the mills already regarding a uh, distribution center for sneakers and such. And um, I wasn't sure if the planning board uh, was aware of the fact that it's being contemplated, um, uh, well, passed by the council, but being comp contemplated that um, the code enforcement officer's hours will be cut from 40 hours to 20. And with all the projects coming up, I mean, we have, I'm not sure, Diane, maybe you could help me out. I'm not sure how involved Dan will be <coughs> with um, the wells that might be coming on, uh, the water tower, um, the self, a possible uh, other projects that I'm not at liberty to discuss, but there are some others that might be coming up. Um, I know we have that pedestrian walk. Um, if 3 North Main Street goes through with those buildings, I imagine there'll be demolition, uh, things to be done there. I know he'll probably work with uh, Rick Mulaski regarding uh, fire code for maybe a, a, a burn, um, a practice burn. Uh, if the mills come, a demolition of the Eagles building. And I, I know Dan is sometimes involved with the town planner regarding certain questions that she might have, applicants might have. I know I've been in there when people come in and out of the office, and he gives information. He's, he's helped, a, you know, Brian Hart had nice things to say about him, and they come into the office, and he'll spend the extra five or ten minutes with people. It saves the applicant money that's doing the work because the contractor knows exactly what Dan's expecting of them. And if we didn't have him in the office to do this, I mean, it's going to be costing the homeowners more. and if we put him to 20 hours a week, sooner or later, which I think is going to be sooner, we're going to have to have him back full time. And that's not fair to him. And I was just wondering, um, and I also have a, a log that he did. He kept a log for about six months, hour to hour, of what he does mm -hmm. and how his time is taken up. And he has a pie chart to show you. And he doesn't have enough time right now to do the work he has to do. And with all these projects coming up, I don't know how it's going to compromise the quality of these projects in town. And I think it was short-sighted and unfair to even consider cutting his hours. And I don't know, I can get that copy to you so you could all look it over and, and, and see what you feel if his position being cut to 20 hours would compromise the quality of the work that New markets depending on to have a quality project done in town. And, and the only way to do that is to have a full-time code enforcement officer. And I don't know if you just want to ask any questions or voice any opinions right now or just think about it and wait until I give you those copies and, and maybe discuss it at your next meeting. But right. I, I just think it's, it's something that the planning board should be aware of. And I, as a town council, I am absolutely, and the budget committee, I am absolutely against it. I think it's detrimental to the health. And he doesn't just do the code enforcement. He does health and sa safety. He does a lot of other things in town. And I think it's not fair for him to be cut to 20 hours. Absolutely not. So I, I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Are there uh, any other comments in the public period? Seeing none, I'll close the uh, public comment period. Uh, having heard uh, Councilor Quacks, are there any comments from the Planning Board I'd like to make at this time regarding uh, Dan Benson? Is the uh, status at this point at the Budget Committee? 
And when is that? Does anyone know when that next meeting? Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Mike, um, from what I understand, even if we put that money back in there, it's still an issue of personnel and, and the town administrator has every right to still put his hours to 20 hours from 40. Thank you. No, I share some of your concerns in that uh, we do have the Mills project and uh, how we're going to have that uh, move forward as quickly as possible, that we all want that to move forward. And uh, <clears throat> with or without Dan or part-time with Dan, but we have to look to the town administrator to make sure that we're covered in that area. And uh, the same with the uh, proposed project we'll hear about tonight on 3 North Main Street. So uh, thank you very much. Next on the agenda is the review and approval of the minutes of January 19th. I'm sure everybody has read those minutes. I think, uh, are there any comments or corrections anyone has? Eric? I have the change, page 8, line 18, where it says NAD 1927. <clears throat> that should say NGVD 1929 or NAVD 1988. Okay. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> I gave up my minutes. Uh, on page three, there was a mistype. It should be um, NHDES, and I apologize for not having a line number it's towards the top. Line 12. N eight, line 12. Should be NHDES. Or what was it? New Hampshire DES. It says NPDES. Um, actually, that is NPDES is the National Pollution Discharge oh. Elimination oh. System. Oh, so that, that is, is correct. correct. Okay, I apologize. Mm. There is another change that we already gave to Erica. Um, I don't have my copy in front of me. Erica, do you have the change? regarding Val's question on the length of the river and the segment, if it's greater than three miles or not, could you read for the record, please? Mal Shelton asked if portions of the river is less than three miles, whether that would fall under the category of a community river. And the answer is no. It's, if it's less than one mile. It, if it's one mile, it would be a community river under the state program. Three river, three miles it's is for a rural, rural community, which right. is a different classification. And then there's a fourth classification. Right. Rural. Uh, no, there's, a, rural. there's four. There's natural, yeah. rural, rural community, community, and community. Okay. And community is? Is what we suspect that new market would fall into that category. But the segment. Um, yeah, rural community it has to be, has to be under mile. three miles. Community under a mile. That's correct. Yep. Any other corrections, additions, deletions on the minutes? Is there a motion to approve as amended? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. You abstain. Aye. Two abstentions. Sorry, two abstentions. Thank you. Next on the agenda is uh, Richard Landry, Jr., AIA Landry Architects, preliminary conceptual consult consultation for a 65,000 square foot mixed use development with a 28,000 square foot supermarket, an additional retail restaurant and office space. The lots are located at 3, 7, and 9 North Main Street, tax map U2, lots 286, 287, 288, B1 zone. Good evening, Mr. Landry. Good evening. Excuse me, um, Chairman, could, yes. just for the public, could, um, could maybe Diane briefly explain what the conceptual design yes. review is, this okay. process? That would be a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sheldon. You read my mind because I tagged the section in our regulations <laughs> in the state law right before the meeting. Um, and I think it would be helpful. 
just so that the planning board members, members of the public understand what the purpose of tonight's session is. It says in our regulation, this meeting shall be directed at a review of the basic concept of the proposal and suggestions that might be of assistance in resolving problems with meeting requirements during final consideration. The board and the applicant may discuss the proposal in conceptual form only and in general terms such as the desirability of the development and proposals under the master plan. Uh, such consultation shall not bind either the applicant or the board and statements made by board members shall not be the basis for disqualifying members or invalidating any action taken. Such decisions, discussions may occur without the necessity of giving formal public notice, but they may occur only at a formal meeting of the board. Uh, preliminary consultation sessions are strictly optional to the applicant and Mr. Landry has requested to be put on the agenda tonight for this purpose. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Landry. Well, as Diane said, uh, this is really a uh, conceptual only review. I understand there's no allowed speak of, uh, you know, any technical aspects of the project or engineering that's ongoing. Um, but really, I wanted to come before the board, show you the plan that is in place at this time. Um, it's being tweaked and modified as, uh, as tenants make requests for modifications. But um, this is where we're at right now, and I thought of, uh, we were at a point where I should come before you and get your input, feelings towards the project, and uh, help guide us as we move forward with, with, the, uh, with the engineering for the project. Can members of the public see this? I know most of the planning board members have a copy. Is that better, Bill? It, it's just on the show on the TV. You can ask Chris to hone in on it. Sorry to interrupt you. No problem. So uh, basically, we have a 28,000 square foot supermarket um, the final size is being determined now it may be a little bit larger when we come before you with our formal application uh, additionally roughly uh, 30,000 square feet of retail some office space um, we have a bank tenant and potentially a, uh, a coffee or a fast food use um, the uh, project has received a lot of uh, a lot of interest from tenants and um, we're at a point where, uh, where we're about ready, you know, to finance the project, and so uh, really, I'm just looking for input from you guys. Any comments, questions, concerns before we go too far with uh, engineering? Greg Michaelitis from Appledore Engineering is here to to hear what you might have to say, and uh, we're moving forward from here. I assume the. Uh kind of the anchor is the supermarket have you correct have you tied up this the uh the supermarket tenant at this we, point we have the supermarket tenant terrific congratulations yep. uh, it's uh it's been about a, a nine month process that i've been working on this project and i i think my initial meeting with diane was probably about seven meetings uh, seven months ago so uh so it's been a long process but but we're there so so uh, it's exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the overall design? We have a a New England mill town. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, the you're intent. You're an architect. <laughs> yeah, the intent will be, uh, you know, to be as as fitting with the character and architectural style of the town as possible. My idea is really to kind of, you know, nudge the downtown style in this direction. Uh, we would hope to create a streetscape along the front of the property to somewhat match what has been done on Main Street downtown, you know, with the, the light posts and so forth. Um, you know, bring in sidewalks across the front of the property, uh, potentially get a, uh, a transit stop, you know, a bus stop at the property to, to bring the public transportation to the, to the site. Um, you know, really, the the materials of the building at this point, um, what's being discussed based on the tenants' desires, is uh, 
is is fitting with the mill style brick and, and you know natural natural stones and and you know the, there's there's more work to be done on that point but it's it's a uh, it's a it's a style that fits the community is the uh, the supermarket as your as your uh, grocery store as your as your base tenant is that sufficient enough for you to move ahead with the application before the we have other board. tenants besides them um, there's probably you know there's a little bit more work to be done but we're at a point now where uh, we're very confident that you know we're uh, we're gonna have a project that will move forward uh, with the supermarket um, and one or two other tenants that you know, we're in advanced stages of, of lease negotiation and so forth with um, you know, we're, we're at, we've are we met, you know, the lender's threshold for what we're going to need to finance the project, and um, I've already been spending money on it, so. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm, I have full intention of moving forward. Do you, uh, do you think that uh, our next meeting is in March? Do you think you will be in a position in March to submit your application? Uh, it's, it's hard to say um, if it will be March like I said there's some final decisions that are being worked out between you know the tenant and myself and tenants within the project as far as kind of whose turf is what and who gets to dictate certain things um, you know uh, Greg Michaelitis will obviously have a, a, a lot of work to do um, we've started some of it and we've already had soils engineers on the site and we've had uh, we got traffic you know, counts happening, you know, the end of this week and the next week for preliminary purposes. And I have a traffic engineer on board. And uh, so there's a lot of work being done right now. Um, but committing to being able to get in here in March, you know, with you know, being able to submit the application two weeks ahead of time, I can't say for sure. But I would like to be if I can. I, uh, I think the planning board demonstrated in the application for the mill redevelopment and the subcommittee uh, or the technical review committee that that uh, volunteered to work on the mill application that this, this planning board can move very quickly and uh, we're prepared to do that to support your application well that's I've gotten that sense and it was, it's been a very uh, very positive constructive discussions that I've had with Diane and, and other members of the board and uh, I, I feel very uh, very good that we'll be able to work together very well. I have no doubt as we move forward, uh, I, I don't feel there's going to be anything that will be cause any controversy. Uh, I don't think I'm, we're going to be asking to do anything that is going to be undesirable to the town or to the board. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to stick strictly within the ordinance and uh, not step outside it and you know, give you guys what you want. And, I know the uh, the master plan has basically called for this exact development for a number of years, and uh, that's one of the reasons why we chose the site we did. We looked at multiple sites in town, and um, we worked on multiple sites in town, and uh, that both the tenant, myself, and uh, you know, others involved felt that this was the this was the site to move forward with, and this is the one we've been working with, and uh, feel pretty pretty confident about having something happen here. Any other questions or comments from the planning board? Um, just to yeah. follow up on that comment, uh, so are there any concerns within our current site plan review regulations that you have questions of, and particularly in regard to uh, lot coverages and um, any kind of ideas you might have for uh, previous uh, areas? No, I mean, we're working uh, pretty diligently to, to review everything um, as we go. And when I have questions, I've asked Diane. She's been very responsive. Uh, gotten back to me right away, um, you know, pointed me in the direction to get the answers if, if I couldn't find them. Um, so, so I feel pretty, uh, pretty well informed as far as uh, the process and, and what we're going to be needing to do. Obviously, it's, it's Route 108, so the state will have involvement in uh, both, you know, you know, two of the tenants on the, on the project um, will want to see a traffic signal at the at the site and quite frankly the traffic study that was previously <coughs> done for this property 
um, using that in the expanded scope of this project, I, the, I, the traffic signal will be warranted um, anyway because of the inflows and outflows from the, the main entrance of the development and uh, also the increased traffic that it's going to cause. So. But I don't want to get too technical. George? Have you shared the information from the past project? I, I wasn't that heavily involved, but I know there were some, I don't think there were showstoppers, but there were concerns by the residents across the street. And we have uh, the file from the previous project that was withdrawn two days before it was proposed for conditional approval, I might add. Um, but that information is available in the planning office, including the letters from the abutters and the minutes of the planning board meeting. So if you want to come into the office and review those. And I think I have most of it. Okay. Um, I have a lot of information from that project. Okay. Um, and various people have made me very well aware of everything that was said and done. And uh, so I think, you know, I'll probably come and get that stuff anyway just to, just to have it in my files. But Well, it is available to you, and just let me know when you'd yeah. like to come in and look at it. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? I can uh, open this up for public questions or comments at this time. If anyone in the audience, yes, sir. Yes, please come up and, and give us your name and your address. Hi, my name is Dave Legault, 11 North Main Street. <clears throat> I'm the abutter just to the south of this, so kind of have a vested interest and in, was kind of wondering where my house is in relation to this. And your house would be right on the other side of these mm -hmm. trees. Yes. Yeah. And what is the setback on the property line there? Uh, Ten feet? I believe it's 25 feet. Let me confirm that for B1 you. Zone. The B1 zone. Mm -hmm. Let me confirm that for you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me. Oh, that's all right. I do have Press it in the your, office. Your it's 25, That's good. 25, feet. 25, 25 feet. feet on the side yeah. into the rear. I, I can't recall what the front setback requirement was. Mm -hmm. And the plans would be a, a yeah. It's to, to the closest mm -hmm. building to your yeah. to your house mm -hmm. uh, from the property line, which is actually right kind of here. Yeah. It's about 42 feet to the mm -hmm. line of that building there. Yeah. Um, again, this, this plan might change uh, mm -hmm. as we move forward. Yeah. Yeah, is this a vehicle access here? Oh, yeah, that's kind of a secondary access, mm -hmm. really. Um, yeah. If there was a light, it would be over here. It would be over here, yeah. This would be more of a right-in, right-out only access, I believe. Mm -hmm. And does this only include those three lots? Does this go into the field? It goes into the field out yeah. back a little bit. Because the field's not listed on the on Yeah, the that was just brought to my attention. I was kind of curious why. Um, the subdivision plan includes the back land? Uh, it includes land from 35 Dame Road. Uh, who, which field. is owned by, who was owned, who was the owner of that property? Uh, Perry's. Okay. The Road. notice should have included that. And we want to make sure for the public hearing that's yeah. it's properly noticed. And, and yes, uh, indeed, it's 25 feet. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. All right. Uh, we all know that water, sewer, Drainage is all substandard on that end of town. So, will this project include any repairs to the infrastructure or improvements? Uh, we haven't, you know, reviewed what will be necessary. But as we move um, forward, we have. You know, Mr. Was, yeah. Legault, this project will go through what's called site plan review, and there'll be a technical review by the town's consulting engineer as well as the public works department, water department, and those are the types of things that will be looked at, whether there's adequate capacity, and if there isn't, then what kind of uh, infrastructure improvements will be necessary to make sure that there is adequate capacity yeah. for the project. I mean, generally, I, uh, this is in support of the master plan. It is a long long time requirement for the community so I think you know I'm not opposed to it I live right next door to it I'm not terribly excited about living next door to it but I'm gonna try to make the best of it from protect my property and see what's right for the community um, my mother-in-law actually owns the property to the very north of this so we've got you surrounded and <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know similar concerns on that end <laughs> and uh, drainage is a big problem over there 
Yeah. Uh, so that, that drain is definitely needs it to be taken care of. Uh, I'm sure it will all be addressed. And the state, for the better part of the last 10 years, has been planning this 108 corridor improvement between New Market and Durham. Um, what's the status of that in terms of? It's so on the state 10-year um, yeah, yeah. plan. On, as a matter of fact, Mr. McMenamin, um, who is on the Stratford Regional Planning Commission um, board, I believe, is, wasn't that project recently reviewed by your committee? And it's <coughs> there is activity. It's going to start soon. Do you have any information on that? I know it's been delayed. I'm it's not been on the, sure. It's, it's been on the docket for quite a while. Yeah, I went to public hearings years ago on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd think by now it'd be shovel ready, you know, and all this <laughs> stimulus it's, money would be available. Each year it comes it's, up, it's still on the plan. That's it's always, yeah, it's always about. on the 10 year plan that's, you that's know, right. always 10 years out. But. but it's not funded for 2010, correct? Not it, it's moment. not on the list for this coming mm -hmm. year, no. And the reason I ask is because it may be relevant because they, there are sidewalks planned you know, all the way from where they end currently to the town line. And I think so. we'll, you know, we'll want to make sure that the plan yeah. is consistent with the state mm -hmm. bikeway plan as well as, um, you know, that the coast and the, the bus yeah. stop people are mm -hmm. satisfied with how the improvements will be coordinated with their system as well. Okay. The rest of it will all come out through the natural process, I guess. So. That's right. Okay. Thanks yeah. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. For your comments. Any other public comments at this time? Yes, sir. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll Martin, close. Put his name in for the record. <laughs> put his name in the record that he's happy. <laughs> That's Mr. Thorne. That's Mr. Thorne, yes. <laughs> Who is in a butter? In a butter, Actually. yes. In a butter or part of the butter application? The project, yeah. Both. <laughs> Okay. He's a coffee or fast food use. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll close the public comment period. Are there any other questions or comments from the planning board? Yeah. I'm, George. I just want to reiterate what Mr. Badger said about fitting into the architecture, and I, I heard what you said. Uh, I would suggest, you know, as part of the site plan review, you have to go to the advisory, Heritage Advisory Commission. And I think that was one of the issues on the last development, and I guess doing that sooner in the process might be more beneficial than waiting until later in the process. I actually have some elevations of the of the project. Obviously, I'm an architect. And it's one of the first things I look at is what the building's going to look like. I just wasn't sure that that would be appropriate for tonight's meeting. I don't, I'm don't. i not saying it was appropriate. I, I'm just looking at a conceptual model <coughs> and, you know, um, and the layout right now. Um, you might want to, all I'm suggesting is we do that sooner. That might make the process go smoother. Right. Or I appreciate Bring that. Bring those issues up earlier rather than later. Right. Yep. Now I'll have it's Dodd building designs from day one. I mean, in essence, this is the entrance to Newmarket from the north, so it's the first thing people will see, and I think it's a great, if it's done well, it can be a great project for that. Yep. Good entry, entryway. Unlike, well, people don't like the, south, the southern entrance <laughs> to Newmarket, so <laughs> you can take the comments from that and use those to help you improve this one. Point. Peter? Just along those same lines, Mr. Chairman, I, I uh, you know, dealing with some things ahead of time sometimes makes it a lot easier as you go along. And uh, I, I think given the amount, the extent of the project and the amount of impervious surface, that drainage is going to be a, an issue that your engineer is going to want to really look into because uh, the, there is there are drainage problems in the area, as was pointed out by Mr. Legault uh, previously, and, and uh, we became aware of them when we considered the, the, uh, the previous development proposal. And uh, as I said, the, the amount of impervious surface there is a challenge, and I'm sure you'll deal with it, but I just wanted to mention that. We're already working on it, so let's... <laughs> okay. Ms. Uh, Quacks? Um, yes, please. Um, I was on the advisory board when the other three North Main Street came up, and it's an advisory board, and the guidelines we used were the architectural review along 108. Uh, but also, the, the other applicant would have had the same problem, not as much as this applicant does regarding the non-pervious. And it was discussed, and it seemed like he was going to use the process that they use up at UNH. They do have a pervious asphalt 
up there. And the only requirement to keep it pervious is that it gets vacuumed once a year to get all the soot and dirt out. Yeah. So something like That's that right. might be, uh, and also smart sponges and so forth. That those were uh, discussed and probably were going to be used in the last application. So just to let you all know. Yep. Thank you. That is correct. Buddy. Yes, sir. Did you? I thought I saw your hand up. No. Okay. Bill. Um, does this property abut the town-owned land? And if that is the case, do you, will there be like maybe thoughts of consideration of providing access to that land? Uh, it does about the town owned land. Uh, it's kind of if you look at the plan It's kind of behind the the finger on the on the left side of the plan that goes back um, Access to back there would be pretty tricky because based on previous surveys There's a lot of wetlands way back there um, If if we could provide it, you know, I have no problems in doing so uh, but It'd be a matter of getting wetland permits to, to cross those wetlands Thank you. Eric? I'd just like to say I think it's a great project uh, conceptually. Um, I think it's great and it'd be great for the town to finally see some commercial development taking place. Um, I do have a question for a later date, um, but I should make a suggestion that you talk to State DOT early on yep. um, about all the driveway locations and you know, proposed signal and everything so we get that squared away before we go too far. No, that's what we're doing the traffic counts this week yep. for, so we can sit down with them and preliminary start the process. Great. Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you very much. We're excited about this. As I said earlier, uh, too. we uh, like to thank the planning board and, the, and again the technical review committee on the uh, on the planning board for the mills work quickly and. That was approved, and we're ready to work with you. Appreciate it very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's the majority of the agenda tonight. <laughs> I'm going for a record. <laughs> no, it's not not oh, ready. Not, not yet. yet. Ready yet? Okay. <laughs> uh, moving on next is uh, new business and uh, old business. I have I have three items. I don't know which one they'd fall under, so let's talk about them. One, Diane, can you give us an update on the pedestrian bridge application for oh the mills? Oh, dear, yes. Um, we're still in the running for the grant. We had a very productive meeting uh, two weeks ago with um, our executive counselor from this area. Her name is Beverly Hollinsworth, and she uh, was joined by the Department of Transportation Commissioner, George Campbell. And we, uh, they came to Newmarket, and John, Peter, and myself, and Michael LeBranch, our town council chairman, uh, met with them, and we showcased our project, and um, they gave us some pointers on the types of things that we need to be uh, preparing for. There will be an opportunity for the town to sell its application, if you will, to the State Transportation Enhancement Advisory Committee, I believe they call themselves. And they have received 53 applications, and New Market is somewhere in the 30, uh, with a 30 ranking, ranking project <laughs> in that range, 30 to 35, I think he said. Um, so we're going to be given the opportunity to make a presentation, and we're hoping that we'll be able to um, get a favorable response and that our application will be granted some additional points so that we will get funded. Um, there are some concerns raised about the um, whether or not there's matching funds available for the project and uh, we're hoping for funding through the CIP program next year to help raise funding for the match. There's a 20% 20 
match associated with the program, which amounts to about $110,000. And Mr. Jimberg has indicated a willingness to work with the town to come up with any shortfall. And we're going to work to try to get some grant monies to help um, amortize those costs. And um, we're hopeful that that will, will come to fruition. Uh, we're also um, looking to get some firmer uh, indications of support from groups such as the Advisory Heritage Committee and possibly the Historical Society that that might help um, show that there's community support for the project and hopefully give us a few more points and get us And then we had the meeting the last Friday. Yes, and the second part is we had a meeting, of sort of a dress rehearsal, if you will, at the uh, Stratford Regional Planning Commission. We met with John and I met, and Ms. Hollingworth also joined us. We met with the TAC committee, which is the Technical Advisory Committee of the Stratford Regional Planning Commission, and we presented our project. And it was very well attended. There were folks from DOT there, as well as Federal Highways, and of course our um, fellow community representatives were present as well. And there were some good points on how we can, you know, better present our application and hopefully we'll be successful in our quest for funding. So I think, you know, we're, we're not there yet, but I think we have a pretty good shot at it. That's yeah. my take on a it. A reasonable shot, yeah. Yeah. So. Good. Good. Thank you. I don't, I'm not sure if I really um, heard correctly. Are we in the, out of the 53 applications, we're in the middle? Well, 30th? We were told that we were somewhere ranking about 35, and I'm confirming that with the Department of Transportation people. We are the third ranking application from our region. Okay. okay. And so that the, the, the top three go to the state for consideration. But I understand this year that the Advisory uh, Transportation Enhancement Committee um, is kind of modifying the approach to the scoring of the applications, and they're going to be once you get to a certain to the to the table so mm -hmm. to speak then they'll throw out the scores and then they'll have a different ranking and scoring of the project so third in the region sounds better than 30th out of 53. well that's <laughs> what we <laughs> well there are eight regions there's, there's, eight, there's, eight, there's eight, nine regions nine actually regions. Okay. and that's the entire state of new hampshire and it is a very competitive grant program and unfortunately there's not enough money to go around so um I think the comment was, correct me if I'm wrong, Diane, the comment was that there are $20 million worth of applications and $6 million to fund them. So that's what, that's the competition. The total project cost for New Marcus application for the pedestrian bridge, the enclosed pedestrian bridge, was $550,000 and 80% of that would be federal funds from the Department of Transportation, Federal Highway Administration, and 20% from the town or the developer in combination of uh, funding in combination from both those sources. Thank you. So that's the status on that. Secondly, uh, I had down here an update on the floodplain discussion that we had. Eric and Eric. <laughs> I know I've done nothing on it. I was out of town. Yeah. I have to ask yeah. some information for Val and Diane. I pulled some other town floodplain regulations to, oh, okay. to show you. Not sure. Well, no, Eric oh. Um, oh. Western was yeah, the other okay. person on the subcommittee. I really would, I hope we can get together maybe after the meeting tonight and look at our calendars and hone in on a time we can meet. Sounds good. Okay. I have, and I want to share this with the planning board, I have, um, this is the letter that came to the town from the New Hampshire Office of Energy and Planning, and as Ms. Copeland mentioned at the meeting last week or last month, that they came and did an audit of our program and came up with some areas where there were some deficiencies in our land use regulations. And it's necessary for us to adopt these changes so that our program will continue to be in compliance with the national guidelines so that new market residents can continue to get flood insurance so this is important that we you know move forward with this and what we, what is being proposed at this point is really our items to clarify certain provisions in our current regulations that are already in effect and also to update definitions um, as being required by the federal government so. so it doesn't sound like this is 
maybe uh, I'm not sure a lot of work. Oh but, no, but but it's important for the uh, for the town of Newmarket to be in compliance so they can get the flood insurance. So yes, if we could move this forward, that would be great. And what what is the process again, Diane, for uh, public hearings and then prior to the uh, board being able to? Okay, Pass there are three the pieces to this. Council. We need to make revisions to our zoning ordinance, our subdivision regulations, and our site review regulations. The zoning regulations would be reviewed and proposed and recommended by the planning board to the town council. Typically, the planning board has its own public hearing to get feedback from the public before going forward with a recommendation. At that after having a public hearing and forming the recommendation, it would then go to the town council, and they have their own procedure on how they adopt um, ordinance changes, including having public hearing and a first and second reading. So for the zoning, it's really a two-step approach with the planning board as well as the town council. For subdivision site review regulations, the planning board can adopt those changes after a duly noticed public hearing and it has to be noticed, I think, 10 days um, in advance. And you need to have the text available for public review at that same time. So it's a more simplified process. So is it feasible that we could do this at the next meeting and move the process forward? If, if we get the committee to yeah. together. Get the committee together and you have to have it. And that would be the public hearing would be next at the next meeting. We could, we could schedule it. if. If the board felt comfortable in doing that, or if you'd like to see the document before it goes to public hearing, uh, we could have that scheduled for our March meeting and then schedule the public hearing for April. It would be entirely up to you. Yeah, let's try and do that. Let's move it forward. And maybe Eric and, and Eric, we can meet after and get a yeah, schedule. Get a schedule yep. together. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And then the uh, impact study was the third one I had. The impact fees, Val. You no. and you no. and Eric. Uh, no, we're Shoreland. <laughs> no, they're Shoreland. They're Shoreland. Okay. Okay. Sorry. okay. I, have, I didn't have that down on my list. <laughs> I have informed um, the town administrator the planning board's interest in working on the impact fee ordinance and. I would like to contact Bruce Mabry, who's our consultant who helped us with the first study associated with impact fees so we can find out what's needed to do this update okay. and try to get a proposal from him. So All I right. don't have anything tonight on that. Okay. Those are my hit, my, uh, Your hit my, list? My, my hit list, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else, new or old business? Charlene. We're going to try to schedule a meeting for next week. Yep. Um, how does Wednesday at 4 o'clock sound? Is that a good time for you, Eric? Sounds fine. Yep. Okay. That's before a council meeting, so I didn't know if you had something already. Okay, because we'd like to try to get that process started. Cynthia Copeland is available to meet with us okay. at that time, so that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? I... Uh, my only comment is I'm not going to be here in March, and uh, Peter's <laughs> Peter's up. <laughs> I will be somewhere else, but uh, I'm very excited about the uh, the presentation tonight for this uh, development, and we just need to be ready to do what whatever needs to be done to move this forward as expeditiously as possible. And I'm sure the rest of the board feels that way. So, would it help to facilitate the process by getting a technical review committee um, appointed, and because then they could, when the application comes in, after Diane reviews it, they might be more prepared for a first meeting. Yeah, we that's, could do that. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Do we have uh, volunteers? I'd be glad to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be you're going to be the chairman next month, don't you? <laughs> I'll volunteer. And for Janice, me. we okay. need one more. On and, and Eric, great. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Rick will be a he can be an alternate. <laughs> and Rick. 
as an alternate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Anything else under old business or new business? Okay, Janice. I'd like to make the motion to adjourn. Will <laughs> <laughs> I speak all night? Second. <laughs> uh, any discussion on the motion? <laughs> all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. <laughs>